Welcome everyone to week nine. The semester is flying. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to talk about just a few reactions to the discussion quote posts uh, about genograms, because that's what the, the discussion board for week nine is gonna include. Uh, it's gonna require you to develop your own career genogram. I'm gonna share just a few thoughts on the King et al article. And then I'm actually, I also posted another video, which is Mark Savickas. So he's the, the creator of the career construction interview approach. So he's a really, really big name in uh, career development work. So it just is a video of him being interviewed and trying to kind of demonstrate the pieces of the CCI with the interviewer. So it's, it's an interesting video. All right, so I want to make keep this video short so that you can spend about there's about 14 minutes of that video that I want you to especially view. Uh, it's, it's about an hour and a half long or, or so I think a little over that but yeah so i'll keep this video short. All right, so the discussion boards for this week for week eight. Uh, or this last week. I thought there are a lot of great thoughts of how to support clients as they're working on the job in the job search process. Uh, I don't want to add a lot to the resume review and, and mock interviews because those are pretty thoroughly discussed by, by many of you. But I did want to talk about networking. That wasn't, uh, we didn't talk, I didn't write about it in last week's interview or anything, but I did want to highlight it, highlight it this week because I think that can be a huge part of the job search is, is the networking. So that can include, you know, helping clients find someone that they want to occupationally interview. So maybe they just want to learn more about, you know, the engineering field, mechanical engineering. So they go interview a mechanical engineer. So instead of just depending on online information, talking to someone in the field does at least two things. Number one, it gives them more in-depth information. So they learn like the behind the scenes that the, you know, just written, writing on online doesn't really capture. Uh, but then number two, they, they develop a relationship. So they're starting the networking process. So I've actually done that myself where I just did a little occupational interview of actually a career counselor. And then that person ended up being like, kind of getting me in his network. And some of those people, like one person in particular was, has been a reference for me multiple times, was a reference for me to get into the, uh, or actually got my first job and uh, was my clinical supervisor for, for part of my master's program as well. So those, those relationships really matter. Uh, even just like I've done just small things like going to lunch with a friend and that has led to job opportunities. Uh, using LinkedIn well, connecting with people that you don't even know just around the country, around the world. Uh, that has actually led to some potential job leads for me even now, just some, some small contract work. Uh, and then just having, you know, just using your, not using, but uh, kind of leaning on your friend circle, like even you're just that, that personal friend uh, circle. So in the end, networking isn't about saying, hey, will you get me a job? It's just about being curious, about learning together with other people. And then a lot of times just being curious and having conversations and talking to people and kind of learning and growing together leads to like, then when you are looking for a job, oh, they, then they can, they know about you. They know your interests. They know what uh, kind of what's going on in your head. So they can kind of be it's, it's basically expanding the, the number of eyes that's looking for potential opportunities for you. Uh, so yeah, those are just a few thoughts on networking. I'm sure you all have plenty of experiences with that as well. Uh, and then the last thing about interviews. So when you're interviewing, uh, this was kind of brought up in a few, uh, a few of the posts for last week, but I did want to bring up that the interviewing process isn't just for the employer to interview you. You know, it's for the client or, you know, the interviewee to also interview the company or the organization. So I think this can, like, sometimes we feel like there's a big power differential that there's this organization that really needs the, or that wants to hire the person. This person is like desperate for the job. So like, the, the, it seems like they're, this power dynamic is, you know, up down. But if the comp the company usually really needs someone to fill the position too, they might be in a bind. They might be really struggling. So they need to fill the position. So, and this person can't say no. It might be kind of seen as like a privileged position to be able to say no to a position. Sometimes that's, you know, some people are desperate, but the, the organizations can be desperate too. So I think that, that 
thought process can equalize the power dynamics going to be on the same level and you know so it's i think that can reduce some of the anxiety or you know it potentially can just to help the, the clients understand that like this is a good opportunity for you to also see if this is a good fit okay so those are just a few of the thoughts that i had for this discussion board or last week's discussion board just a few thoughts on the career genogram. So this week in the discussion board, you're, you're required to do your own career genogram. I think this can be kind of an insightful process. Uh, in the written lecture, I give a few examples of, of what genograms can look like. And let me actually just pull it up really quick so I can give some examples here. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. We'll look at it together briefly. All right, so here is one example of a career genogram. So I think this is a good example. Uh, this only goes from like the parents. I guess it depends on who's doing this genogram. If, if like Samuel, the pharmacist here was doing the genogram, then this is the parents, the grandparents and aunts and uncles. I talk about like what these different uh, figures mean. Usually squares are male, circles are, are female, and there's other just like uh, transgender male, transgender female. There's some links below that also include uh, how to de depict more genders. Uh, so this is, this is about what I want it to look like is, I really wanna encourage you to go back at least to your grandparents. Uh, and then your parents, and if you can, your aunts and uncles, if that applies. And then obviously your siblings. You know, this can get really big quickly. I know some families are really big. Uh, so like if you want to go ahead and like include some cousins and everything, that's totally fine. Uh, but yeah, at least just grandparents, parents, and then yourself and siblings, if, if, if you have siblings. So what you do is just put the name and basically their, their occupation, and that doesn't have to be paid. It can be paid. It can be just like student roles. Like a lot of times people are in that student role. Uh, so what this does is it kind of highlights patterns. Uh, like you can see, like there's some pretty clear gender uh, patterns here in this in this family in this example. Uh, so that can be something to to cue in on and think about and explore. Uh, also, right here, this this genopro.com. This includes way more dynamics of what a genogram can look like, not just these straight lines, but they can include include a lot of different types of lines that you know, mean like, okay, there's a plain normal relationship. This one, this relationship would be distant, cut off or estranged, that there's harmony or friendship, best friends, even like abuse, uh, violence, like fused hostile relationships. So these can get pretty in depth. Uh, these are also used in like family counseling. Uh, so that's, that's why a lot, some sources have a lot more emphasis on these relational dynamics and i think that could be helpful it doesn't have to be like the dynamic between every single person so if 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 you were here as samuel like you could put like a close best friend relationship with just between uh right here between these two siblings like if that included if that applied there and if this relationship was distant you could do a dotted line there if this grandmother was really close to samuel then you could put like a close line there so it doesn't have to just be all of these these lines here. Okay, so let me pull up my notes real quick again. Yeah, so you can control the, the depth to which you want to go into that. You don't have to do all those, you know, extensive relational dynamics that I just described, but at least just kind of putting the name and the career in those three generations uh, is, you know, I think what would kind of be the minimum and kind of the norm for career genograms and putting more detail could be potentially helpful to you. So you can absolutely control the how much you want to share because, you know, once again, you're posting this to everyone in class. So be aware of just like, uh, I would encourage you to avoid, you know, significantly personal details because I know some of those relational dynamics can get very personal of what those relationships mean. So yeah, kind of keep, keep that, you know, in mind to, to, to not significantly overshare. Uh, okay, 
the the king at all article i just I, just a few thoughts of overall it's i think it gives a nice description of the social constructivist and constructivist approach approaches to career counseling i just want to highlight page 85 page 85 it's a pretty succinct it's it's near the end of the article so it's kind of wrapping things up and describing the implications of the of the study that was performed for training uh, for practice and for supervision. So I think you'll see that it's pretty, it'll be much more relevant to a counselor uh, rather than like the researcher lens. Obviously the, the whole article can be helpful, but I think that page 85 might be especially helpful to you. All right, so the last few thoughts just about the Civicus video, it's posted there in the description. I kind of already talked about this, but I wanted to highlight it here. Uh, the creator of an approach is awesome to listen to. You know, so just listening to the, the creator of the career construction interview can be really helpful. They have a really in-depth understanding. So Savickas is, is, is really, uh, I think, wise about how in a lot of, and has a lot of depth about career counseling. So he's worked with Holland. He's, you know, worked with Super, like personally. He, he knows them and has kind of worked under them. So I think there's kind of a, a legacy of, the, of uh, kind of what he draws upon. Okay, so the whole video is, is really long, like I described, but if you emphasize between the 46 minute mark and just after the hour mark, so those 14 minutes, that's where he discusses the career construction interview and kind of goes in, uh, tries to, to demonstrate it a little bit with the interviewer, actually. They, they know each other, so Savickas uses some sarcasm. Uh, it might be seen as a little bit passive aggressive, but I don't think that's the intent. Just they, they know each other and have that relationship. At least that's kind of what I've gleaned watching the video several times. But Okay, there's, uh, there's my thoughts. Uh, just the last update on the autobiography paper, the self-report autobiography. I'm going to be grading those this week. I hope to have them done you know, pretty soon. I'll just be kind of plugging away at all of them, but I'll start this week and yeah, I'll start getting those back to you as soon as I can. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks.